and let us all that we can to build a better future. Okay. Well, Trump is beating Biden. Yes, we're talking about polls, polling data. No, not 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 any other data, but 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 the fun stuff. Like where where Trump is gaining more support among independent and Hispanic voters. Black voters are leaving the Democrats, and corporate media is smoking on that copium, the copium hopium, in regards towards how Biden is failing. Now the shield wall is still up and strong, and with the Democrats and corporate media saying that Biden is a strong candidate. He's the old dog, but he doesn't have that much of a fight in him. Before we pull up the data, before we pull up the commentary, I need to pull up this video here. And I don't like it. Okay? I don't like where this country is going, our president, because when you look at this video here, our president, Joe Biden, is regaling the audience of meeting with a French prime minister. You know, no, not Macron. He's talking about one that he met a long time ago that's already dead. This man's 81 years old. Does it come as a surprise why people aren't inspired by Biden anymore? People have pled guilty. You know, I... Right, right, right after I was elected, I went to a, what they call a G7 meeting, all the NATO leaders. I was in, I was in the south of England, and I sat down and I said, "America's back." And Mitterrand from Germany, I mean from France. Look- Mitterrand is gone. He's confusing Macron with Mitterrand. Looked at me, and said, uh, "said, you know, why?" Why, how how long are you back for? And I looked at him, and the the Chancellor of Germany said, what would you say, Mr. President, if you picked up the paper tomorrow in the London Times, and the London Times said, a thousand people break through the House of Commons, break down the doors, two bobbies are killed in order to stop the election of the prime. So they're talking about January 6th. I am tired of January 6th, okay? It was a clown show. It was stupid. Only those lame enough to show up showed up. How's that sound? That goes from the politicians to everyone there. Everyone that was there on January 6th, you contributed to the overall national headache where everyone's saying, oh, that was the end of democracy. It was, a, it was just almost the start of a, of a civil war without end. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. It was stupid. Everything about it was stupid. Nothing about it is redeemable. It was stupid. Com- complete disregard. And of course, AOC does like, oh my goodness, I almost gonna die that day. All these Democrats are saying it was almost the end. They did a documentary film. They played it in Congress, and of course, of course, like like all those kind of serious documentary films, it has that serious bong, bong kind of music in it. Like it's it's the end of great battles happening. Old Nancy Pelosi grabbing a battle axe saying, I'm going to protect my ice cream. So let's talk about the hopium copium. First, new national poll shows Trump 47% and Biden 42% as Trump leads among independent and Hispanic voters. Who's surprised? Not me. There's a new NBC poll out this morning showing that national head-to-head numbers, Donald Trump at 47%, Joe Biden at 42%. It's not that different from what CNN's poll showed at the end of last week, although in this, the margin of error is 3.1%, which means that Trump is just outside uh, of the margin of error. What do you make of this? Well, inside of it was fascinating. He, uh, Trump was crushing among independents. He was leading among Hispanics. That- well, because Trump has more of an engagement with his political movement. Case in point, Bernie abandoned his movement. AOC and the squad and the Congressional Progressive Caucus abandoned their movement. Biden used, and the Democrats to, to, to fully, uh, on their part, fully abused social media and had their sycophants bully everyone into voting for Biden. Now we have Biden, and four years later, nothing has made our lives better. We're still struggling. So, of course, Trump is going to bring in more voters. Of course, people are going to put on their rose-colored glasses and say, you know what? It wasn't so bad under Trump. Human beings are like that. We are flawed creatures. 
None of us are perfect. To Ashley's point, there's other voter groups here that yeah. need to be discussed. If Donald Trump wins Hispanic voters in this election against Joe Biden, it'd be very difficult to see how he would lose the presidency. The only question in the poll that actually was good for Joe Biden was if Donald Trump is convicted of a felony, then it flips. They're really hoping that he gets convicted. Democrats, if Trump dodges this bullet and all these other lawsuits and indictments against him, do you have any idea how much powerful it's going to be? And plus, I have to bring up when Keen went to New Hampshire to speak to Republican voters, they didn't give a damn if Trump was going to be arrested. They still wanted him. He's their guy. You think Nikki Haley's going to get that movement? No. Republican voters all want Trump. That's why he won his last two primaries. And it's going to be very funny to see what happens in South Carolina. Flip and Biden actually led him on the ballot by a couple of points. So uh, it just goes to show you what happens in that courtroom, uh, if it ever happens, might be the most important thing that happens in this election. There's a new NBC. Now let's deal with more hopium copium. Folks, if you ever want to see people struggle and deal with the fact that uh, their old dog doesn't have what it takes, meet BSDNC. Let's just start with the bottom line. When you ask folks, hey, if it's the general election and it's Trump versus Biden, our poll, Donald Trump now leads Joe Biden by five points. Compare that to the last time we polled back in November. Trump was ahead then, but it was only by two points. It's even more significant when you look at it this way. Over time, we have been testing for five years now, going back to 2019, a Biden-Trump matchup. Remember, 2019, 2020, Joe Biden led. He led big in every single one of our polls. For the first time in November, Donald Trump pulled ahead in our poll, and now at five points, this is the biggest lead NBC has ever had in 16 polls for Donald Trump over Joe Biden. And, of course, undergirding all of this is this question of he is the incumbent, Joe Biden. We ask voters, what do you think of the job he's doing? And look at that, Kristen, 37 percent approve and now 60 percent disapprove. And we should say that is the lowest approval rating since former President George W. Bush's second. Agreed. I have to read this comment. This guy drinks way too much coffee. Dude, I know you have to keep your head on a swivel and be on point when you're when you're doing the morning news. You need to calm down. She's kind of giving him that look, too. Like, calm down. Firm. Yeah, and it's, put that in further context, too. Bush in his second term wasn't running for re-election. Yeah. Here's the presidents who were running for re-election in our poll starting their re-election year. What was their approval rating? Bush was over 50. He won. Obama was almost at 50. He won. Trump, four years ago, was 46. He lost. Look how low Biden's number is. Ah, oh, that's so pathetic. Hey, Democrats, and vote blue no matter who. That's your dog in the fight. Paired to those predecessors at this point. Their numbers all much bigger. Than no, no, duh. Yes, yes, their numbers are much bigger. Corporate media has no respect for you. Those numbers are a lot bigger. Than yeah, President Biden it, right it shows you yeah. the improvement Biden has to make here yeah. in the coming months. The issues that are driving this, too, the economy, no surprise, we've been talking about it, but look at that advantage for Trump, 22 points. Wow. And securing the border here, folks, a very important Trump with a 35 point advantage. The economy is so striking, Steve, because. Yes, it is the number one issue. The economy and to some extent, yes, the border crisis, especially knowing for a fact that many uh, states that are on the border are going to want to have this uh, issue addressed, as well as residents living in sanctuary cities. Already in Chicago, it is a, a hotbed where the city is divided. In regards to do we remain a sanctuary city or do we send the migrants home? In my personal opinion, the city was never prepared for taking care of the migrants and they have to go. Already, many residents are angry and upset at just overall uh, how the city's been handling it. And we can't afford it anymore. I do wonder what the DNC convention is going to look like as there are numerous groups upset with the overall Democratic leadership in Chicago, but also with the Democratic Party as a whole. Jobs are up. Inflation is down. Voters aren't giving him credit for that, clearly. Yeah, there are a couple areas in here, I think, where Democrats see, see potential opportunities to grow Biden's support. Certainly, they are hoping the economy folks change their perceptions of it and start rewarding Biden for it. That's what they're hoping, certainly. Yes, everyone's hoping. Hoping with the copium. But speaking of more hopium with the copium, let's pull this video up here.
But then there's also this. Look at some of the weaknesses Biden has in our poll right now. Young voters, they were a big part of his coalition in 2020. We got a 42-42 tie Biden and Trump. That's not good news for Biden. But the real issue here is there's a lack of enthusiasm and engagement, enthusiasm just to vote at all among this age group in our poll. Let's see, 18 to 34. Well, that's a young group that's going to be denied the ability to ever secure a home or live the American dream. You have Americans wondering if they'll be able to make ends meet. You have Americans wondering if they'll still be able to survive. But it's not only just the young people. The older generation is invested in this, too. A lot, And that's why I'm proud of my audience. We have boomers, Gen Xers, millennials, and Gen Z, and everyone across the political spectrum. And I think universally, y'all can agree, hey, I'm kind of worried about the future, especially the older generation, when they look at their children and grandchildren and potential great-grandchildren. What kind of world is being left behind? I don't want them to suffer, which is what any normal person would want. Gen X thinking the same thing. Millennials thinking, gee, am I ever going to own a home? Gen Z wondering, what's owning a home? And pretty soon, Gen Alpha, if things don't change, you'd be like, Owning a home? Don't you know that's a superstition? Watch. If things don't change, it's going to come as a shock. You'll be like, hey, there used to be a time when you could own a home. And there used to be a time there was this movie called Home Alone. This kid, Macaulay Culkin, you know, he played he played his character where, his, where he was by himself. And he spent $20. $20. That's an Andrew Jackson, old hickory. About, about a whole cart of groceries. Remember when money used to mean something? Type one for kit. Nothing's changed. Money's still good. Type two, Jesus Christ. I remember when money used to mean something. An old hickory could do a lot back in the day. An old hickory could. Biden folks are hoping that as the election nears, that interest level will rise. And while the young voters do not have generally favorable views of Biden, they also don't have favorable views of Trump. So the Biden folks hope that as young voters get more engaged in this, they'll ultimately decide basically they more want to vote against Trump than they want to vote against Biden. They see an opportunity for growth there. You also look here, the, the Hispanic vote, Basically, even Trump ahead by one point, that's something Republicans have been talking up the possibility of. They've got to like that. Among African-Americans, this is a solid lead for Joe Biden, 75, 16 percent. But Democrats want to. Now, of course, when you look at all these other numbers, watch as that numbers will change. Black voters are becoming more and more disenfranchised with the Democratic Party, just like Hispanic voters and white voters, independents. And some people may actually vote for Trump. Now, ideally, I want everyone to consider voting independent third party and fighting to make sure their state becomes a citizen ballot initiative. But we're, we're, not, we're not there yet. You can't rush into things. This is going to be a gradual, arduous march for people to eventually wake up and realize just how we have to change the system. It's not going to happen overnight. But I'll sit here comfortably and say, yes, these numbers will go more in the favor of Trump as the election cycle continues on. In the previous video that I played where Biden is reminiscing about speaking to a dead French prime minister and confusing that dead one for Macron says a lot. And this isn't the first time we've seen Biden gaff or make a stutter or slur around. The man's 81 years old. He's not all there. James O'Keefe, when he sat down with that security analysis person, I'm willing to bet that the White House staff is worried about Biden. He's an old man. When you have senators that are in their 80s or going on to their 90s and they don't know where they're at, it is cause for alarm. They want to do better than that. They want to keep Trump in single digits here. They want to get this Biden number up, you know, about 10, 15 points further from where it is. So that's where they would see opportunities for growth sort of demographically. Yes. But let's talk about lack of enthusiasm. Enthusiasm. You know, I just I, I like that scene from The Untouchables, you know where Alphonse Capone, who didn't do anything wrong, Al Capone was arrested for tax evasion. Okay, hashtag Hard Lens Media said it first. He wasn't arrested for being part of that thing, that outfit. He's a legitimate businessman. Just tax evasion. That's it. Anything else, I don't know what, what, what all you people will bring up. But enthusiasm. Lack of enthusiasm. Shout out again to Case Study QB. But what about also yeah. voters of color, particularly black voters, where we have, this president has seen an erosion of support at times. You mentioned a Cornell West. Maybe it's RFK Jr. What's yeah. the level of concern there? That's not just a third party candidate yeah. could draw away progressives, but also part, part of what should be considered the Democratic base, black voters. Yeah. 
Well, that's an enthusiasm challenge uh, that is significant. I think the Biden folks recognize they have to work on. But I think it's not totally separate from uh, his challenges on the, the, the far left. Uh, talking to Democrats last week for my column, one of the, the things that stuck out to me was uh, black pastors starting to criticize Biden on the Middle East. Uh, one congressman told me a black pastor took him aside and said, you know, what's going on with, with this war in Gaza? Because my parishioners are starting to bring this up. That's a black church. That's not, you know, the barista yeah. in Madison, Wisconsin. So it, it, it's a real challenge, Jonathan, that includes black voters, too. Jonathan, Al Sharpton, when, when you talk. Oh, boy, here we go. Al Sharpton, folks, get ready for this one. Get ready for this. What corporate media is trying to do here is put on a narrative saying that black voters aren't leaving the Democratic Party. Now, here's the thing. Black people, Latinos, whites, everyone, everyone, everyone who's part of that rainbow, everyone who's part of each different generation has the right to choose how they're going to use their vote. People are tired of being pandered to. People are tired of being placated. People are tired of having smoke blown up their wazoo. It is their right to choose if they want to vote for one political party or another. They should not give loyalty to one group one political institution, because if you don't follow us, life will be hard. People are getting screwed over and no one can't hide it anymore. You can't hide it and dismiss it when universally Americans wonder how they're going to survive. And with a senile old president who doesn't even remember who he's talking to or doesn't even look like he knows what he's doing, it doesn't inspire confidence or enthusiasms. Talk about the yes, black sir. churches and, and, and others that have raised the question. And that's yeah. clearly the case. I mean, I, I certainly came out strong uh, when October, I mean, when uh, January, uh, October 7th happened. But <sighs> January 6th, October 7th, all this other stuff. Can we talk about something else, please? Uh, uh, clearly, I'm disturbed with Netanyahu and I'm disturbed with what's going on in Gaza. The fact yeah. that you uh, are raising this, though, do you think if the Biden campaign made a clear distinction, I mean, without trying to have it both ways, that they are not supporting Netanyahu and, in right. fact, deal with other issues, that this can yes. deal with the enthusiasm question? Because I, I think well, that, someone... You know, if I could play that scene right now and not get hit with a copyright strike, I just... You know, maybe I'll save that for a movie night, you know. We'll, we'll, we'll enjoy it together. We'll watch The Untouchables, okay? Because that enthusiasm, the word enthusiasm is being brought up so much that I, I feel now I'm obligated to talk about, to at least play that film for movie night. On the far left will be far left, but I think that mainstream black vote that is now questioning, yes. and all of us are, yeah. are saying that there is no real straightforward language on what's going on here. Well, here's the reluctance, Reverend, on that is that the Biden folks are trying to get this this moonshot deal in the Middle East. Um, and I think to do that, you can't really come out against Netanyahu because they're trying to get a deal with the Israelis and the Saudis uh, in which there would be some path toward a two state solution. Um, it, you would also get a security deal between the U.S. and the Saudis and the Saudis would recognize uh, Israel as a state. And, and Oh, this whole idea. Look, look, the point is, point is, no one's taking the initiative because so far Israel is not being opposed by London or Washington, D.C. Even though they have the power to do so, there's still a crisis there. And many Americans across the spectrum are seeing this. And yes, the Democrats should be held accountable because the Democrats ran on bringing the soul back to this country and being better than Trump. The Democrats could be doing so much more, but because they're a corporate party, just like the Republican Party, they've been paid to shut up. So, of course, they're not going to challenge it, but they can't stay quiet too long because constituents are watching this. And by the way, yes, the institutions that rule over America did a successful job in brainwashing all of us to be subservient to one party over the other. But now that hypnotism is starting to break and the next generation and the generation after aren't buying into it. Because the older generation is telling people to wisen up. Don't become a puppet to the two-party system. These politicians, both parties, don't like us. They don't think about us. They don't respect us. And so when you have these anti-war protests, it's towards the Democratic Party. 
We've got now what? Three, potentially four conflicts happening under Biden. Ukraine, Gaza, Yemen, Iran. And let's not forget poking, poking China with Taiwan. So that's five. How wonderful. What could possibly go wrong? And I think if you're going to get that kind of deal, it's a long shot, obviously. You can't really cut ties with the current prime minister of Israel during negotiations. But there's no question that there, there is immense pressure on Biden to start at least subtly taking steps away from, from, from Bibi. And guys, you saw it last week. It was a modest step. But, you know, Biden coming out with that order uh, and leveling sanctions uh, on a handful of settlers, um, you, know, you know, in the West Bank. I was I was told by folks in the White House uh, a step toward the, the sort of left wing base in the party of we're not just rolling over for BB. So, yes, that's why there's a lack of enthusiasms, enthusiasms for the two party system. That's why people aren't turning out to vote. That's why people aren't excited. Because the Democrats can't deliver. That's what's wrong with Joe Biden. That's what's wrong with the Democrats. And yes, I get my criticism from people. How come you're so mean with the Democrats? Why don't you criticize the Republicans? Because what else can I say about the Republican Party that hasn't been said? I know what to expect from Republican lawmakers. You want to watch another show that's going to be bad-mouthing Republican politicians? Go ahead. It's rotten fruit on the ground. It's not low-hanging fruit. It's rotten fruit on the ground. I already know what to expect from the GOP. Nothing. Now, just because I say that Trump kept his political movement together, that's not an endorsement. That's just a fact. The Democrats didn't keep their big tent party together. The Democrats just took a sloppy dump in there and told everyone to enjoy it. So it's not my fault that the Democrats shot themselves in the foot. It's not my fault that black voters, Latino voters, white voters, young people, all people are leaving the Democratic Party. It's not my fault that the Democratic Party can't inspire people to turn up like they did in 2016 and in 2020. It's not my fault that they did that. They did that to themselves. And of course, I'm going to call them out because they put on this fancy neoliberal mask saying they care about Medicare for all or student debt forgiveness or any other social issue that progressives uh, followed around by. They're the ones that gave a middle finger to the left. They're the ones that gave a middle finger to independence. And they're the ones that gave a middle finger to anyone else that stood in solidarity with them. So there is a potential that Democrats could win the 2024 election cycle. Fine. But there's also a very good chance that they could lose because of their own actions and their own choices. And with their whole bully tactic in 2020, because what? We got to stop the orange boogeyman? Look at the recent polling data. Look at what's happening now. Democrats, if you want to inspire people, be inspirational. But, oh, wait, you can't do it because you expect people to be suckers and be subservient to you. Well, that's not my problem. My viewers don't owe you their vote. No one owes you a vote. You got to earn it. Maybe try and work for that. Wouldn't that be a sight?